All right, welcome everyone. This is Scott here again with a new video to help you learn how to trade, invest, and master your finances so you can apply that knowledge in the real world and multiply your money. And so for today's video here, I wanted to discuss my current approach for options trading, and then I'll explain how I'm gonna be changing that going forward in the very near future, and also how you guys will be seeing that change happening in my videos going forward too. And I think that last piece there will be very interesting for you guys to see. And also very quickly before we get started here, for those of you who are new to the channel, I just want to let you know that I do also teach on Skillshare, where you can take my very in-depth classes on options trading and stock market investing. And I provided some links to some of the introductory courses of mine in the description of this video below. So be sure to check those out. And when you sign up for Skillshare using any of those links, you'll get a two-week free trial. All right, so now diving in here. And so if you have seen my other YouTube videos or my Skillshare courses as well, then you will know that my entire approach to options trading revolves around option selling. And the core component to an option selling strategy is implied volatility, right? Also, if you've seen my other videos, then this chart down here will also look very familiar. In this case, this graph down here is just showing you the implied volatility over a one year time span for SPY. And so the implied volatility for any particular stock or ETF that you're looking up, this is one of the factors that gets baked into the prices of options. Right, and as implied volatility expands, that's going to increase the prices of options. And therefore, at that point, it will be very advantageous to be selling those options. Right, whenever you sell something, you wanna sell it for the highest price possible. So that's why I always look for very high implied volatility. And then conversely, when implied volatility contracts, and that makes option prices become very cheap, I tend to stay away from those options. I do not sell them, and I will almost never buy them either. And so typically what I do every morning as part of my routine is I'll come into my platform here and check first on my various positions that I have on at the moment. So down here in this section, you can see all of my current positions and they're organized by their position type. So you can see I have one called debit spread on, two naked puts, one put debit spread, quite a few strangles, an iron condor, etc. And I know I just mentioned that I pretty much only sell options and yet I do have a put debit spread on and a call debit spread. These are option buying strategies. And these two positions right here are really just meant as hedges for the moment. They're designed to make money if the market were to come down rather swiftly. And given where the market is right now, it's pretty much gone up almost 13 days in a row. Then I'm sure you can understand why I do have these small hedges on right now. But point being is I'll come into my monitor tab here first and check my positions and make sure that nothing is going crazy. And so of course, if I do have a few positions here that are taking on water that need some kind of adjustment, I'll make those adjustments first. And then once I have all my positions squared away for the moment, I'll come back to the charts and I'll go over to forward slash VX and check out the volatility futures, right? Forward slash VX, this shows you the price action for VIX futures contracts. And this, in my opinion, is the best way to get a real time picture or view of where implied volatility is across the entire market, right? Because the VIX tracks implied volatility for the S&P 500, which is pretty much the bulk of the market. And so naturally you can see over here with the market just climbing higher every single day for the past two weeks almost, the volatility across the entire market has decreased pretty much every single day. So this is very standard behavior between implied volatility and market direction. When the market climbs higher, you typically see implied volatility contract. And then conversely, when the market sells off, you will oftentimes see implied volatility expand. So again, seeing where VIX futures are trading at the moment is a great way to get a clear picture on where implied volatility is across the entire market. And so this also means that options across the entire market, for most stocks at least, are going to be very cheap at the moment. So it's going to be pretty hard right now to find good trading opportunities as an option seller. And that's just the way it works sometimes. Not every market environment is going to be a great environment for your strategy. But eventually we will see a pop in implied volatility and it could be for any reason. And when that happens, you can bet I'll be very active in putting on new trades. And so lastly here, as part of my brief overview on how I approach options trading, I wanted to discuss briefly my mechanics when it comes to trading. Specifically, when do I typically get out of trades for either a profit or a loss? So I wanted to take a look at Apple here because I thought the implied volatility was a bit higher for the stock at the moment. But unfortunately, as you can see right now, the implied volatility is definitely on the lower end over the past year. But I do know for a fact that Twitter is actually exhibiting some high implied volatility at the moment. And so there you go, you can see the IV rank is at 38% and the IV percentile is at almost 70%. So 
So definitely, as of right now, the implied volatility for Twitter is a bit elevated given where it usually is. So this would definitely be a stock I will consider selling options on. And you can see right now, Twitter is a bit range bound at the moment. So perhaps I wanted to sell a strangle on the stock, which is the combination of both selling a call and a put at the same time. So let's come over to the trade tab now. And I already have the May expiration cycle pulled up here. So as a quick example, let's say I wanted to sell this call option right here. This is the 90 strike call option. And then alongside with that, let's say I wanted to sell the 60 strike put option. Both of these contracts are trading for right around 100 bucks. The put option a little bit more. And so let me actually set up this order here so you can see just how much exactly I'll be taking in as credit for the strangle. So the 90 strike call option down here and then also the 60 strike put option right there. And so there you go, just over 200 bucks in total credit for putting on this strangle here. And now when it comes to my mechanics and talking first about when I like to take my profits, generally speaking, I do take my profits at around 50% of the total credit. So 50% or half of 205 bucks is right around 102 bucks, just rounding down a bit there. So once the price of the strangle drops down to $102, I would then close the position. I'd buy back these contracts and then I would walk away with a $102 profit. Now what about taking losses? And this is where things will be changing for me in the very near future. As of right now, what I've been doing when it comes to naked option strategies like a strangle or just a short put, a short call, naked options, right? For those strategies, I typically take my losses once those losses exceed two to three times my initial credit. So in this example here, if my total credit is $205, that means if I were to take my losses at two times my initial credit, well, I just multiply this by two. So that means if my losses on this strangle ever exceed 410 bucks, I will just cut my losses at that point, buy the contracts back and move on, find a new trade. And like I said, I do range between two times to three times my initial credit. So as a second example here, so again, my initial credit is 205 bucks. And so now if I were to take my losses at three times my initial credit, I would just multiply this by three. So now if my losses hit 615 bucks, at that point, I will cut my losses, move on and find a new trade. And so there are tons and tons of other smaller details that go into my approach and my general strategy for options trading. And I'll be discussing all of that in future videos, but just wanted to first give you a brief overview on what I generally do here. And so far, this approach has been working for me. At the time I'm recording this video on April 14th, 2021, my portfolio here is currently up by about 7% for the year. So if things were to keep going the way they've been going, then perhaps by the end of the year, I could be looking at around a 20 plus percent return, which in my view is pretty decent, but I definitely want to do better. And as a trader, you should always be trying to find newer and better ways to improve your strategy, to improve your performance. And so what I've been doing for the past three months almost is I've been testing out a slightly different method for managing losing trades in my fake money account. I do manage two different accounts. This one here is my real money account. And then like I said, I do also manage a fake paper money account where I can test out new strategies and new techniques. And the cool thing was that this new technique that I've been testing out was shared to me via an article from one of my Skillshare viewers. And he outlined his entire approach for hedging naked option positions like strangles, naked puts, naked calls, etc. using the stock itself, either buying it or shorting it at certain price points. And like I said, I've been testing out this method in my fake money account and the performance has been very encouraging. So what this means for my channel and my trading going forward is of my three videos every week, one of those videos is going to be live trading. And it won't actually truly be live in the sense that I will not be doing live streams. Although live streams are definitely something I want to do in the future once I'm doing this thing full time. But I definitely think this will be a great thing for you guys to see going forward. You know, seeing the actual application of everything that I teach, everything that I do in the real markets with real live trades. And also for me, I'll be testing out this new altered approach to handling losing trades in real life scenarios going forward. Right, like I said, the past three months in my paper money account have been great. So now it's time to put some real money at risk and do this for real. So finally here, just to wrap this all up, I will be finishing out the month of April, this current month, and then towards the end of April slash the beginning of May, that's when you can expect those videos of live trading to start coming out. So with that being said, that does it for this video here. I hope you enjoyed it. And definitely let me know your thoughts or if you've got questions in the comment section below. And don't forget, 
If you want to take some very in-depth classes on options trading and stock market investing, then check out my Skillshare courses. Links in the description of this video. And finally, if you enjoyed this video, then please give it a thumbs up, drop a comment, and subscribe to my YouTube channel. I drop new videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, and you don't want to miss out. So thanks again for watching, and I'll see you next time.